Hey, this is Nick the Mining Book Guy, and I just got back from Beaver Creek uh, Precious Metal Summit in Colorado late last night, and I'm so excited about everything that went on. I didn't really chat too much on CEO.ca, but here's kind of my big summary of, of everything. Definitely have to start with a big thank you to Jessica and Karen who organized this thing, and all the other helpers who I don't know their names, but they really helped a ton. Uh, as always, uh, helping me prepare with emails before and during the conference, and it's just run so perfectly. Anyone who tells you that Beaver Creek isn't the best conference hasn't been to Beaver Creek. So that is absolutely true. For North America, for sure, for sure. Maybe there's something else in another part of the world I don't know about, but keep that in mind. That's a huge takeaway if you don't listen to all the other details I have. So it's something you should consider, and I know I have a lot of listeners who maybe haven't attended the conference before. Maybe if you get serious enough, you could do this in a few years. But anyway, beside the point, uh, let's um, get into some of the things that happened. A uh, shout out to uh, Bill Powers at Mining Stock Education. He actually published an awesome roundtable interview with me, David Earthley, and Trevor Hall. Uh, that we did after a few days at the conference. That's actually posted on Mining Stock Education, so go check that out if you haven't. I said some things. Uh, David and Trevor said some more intelligent things, so that should be fun. And, and a shout-out specifically to Trevor, who interviewed me right before the conference took place, and I think I said some pretty interesting things there, too. That's not out yet, but that's from his Mining Stock Daily site, a uh, podcast site, which is awesome. And I almost always repost it on Twitter. So once it comes out, if you follow the Mining Book Guy Twitter page or Trevor's page, um, you'll, you'll see it probably within the next few weeks. What was so cool, and I think this is going to probably happen every year I go, it's not just the meetings you set up with companies or with people in advance. It's the random stuff. So the shuttle up the hill, because I the last two years I've stayed at a hotel at the bottom of the hill. Um, last year, I met this big time precious metals fund manager. And I didn't talk about that, but that was a real highlight for me. This time I met another precious metals fund manager, just happened to be sitting next to him, but he's from New Zealand. He was a Kiwi and it's his first time here. And that's a big deal because I actually met two other Kiwis and these guys never show up here. And we had a great conversation. I actually saw him another time and I'm sure I'll stay in touch with him. It's so interesting that he made a lot of money. I know that he made money in Australia, but he's investing a lot in Canada and doing all this global stuff. And so, again, Beaver Creek is the place to go in North America to meet people from around the world. And it's getting better and better for that all the time. On the other shuttle ride, and this was actually my shuttle from Beaver Creek back to Denver to the airport, happened to sit next to this really ambitious young um, British CEO in a pre-IPO company Sure, I would never have met him at like PDAC, which is way too big. And we were like jabbing for like over two hours about all these little companies and stuff. And like, I learned so much from him about what he's doing and I can't invest in what he's doing, but I'm definitely going to stay in touch simply because I'm, I'm not an accredited investor. Maybe that will you know, change. We'll, we'll see. But I'm actually headed to the London one-to-one -one in November and I'm sure I'll try to see him there. But again, like I've heard from people in Vancouver who say that they think Beaver Creek is just a bunch of Vancouver people. Not true. And this is better than anything in Vancouver. So all you guys in Canada, you are missing out if you're not in Beaver Creek. That's that's just the truth. The only other thing that I would attend every year or try to is PDAC, and it's an entirely different animal. So again, emphasizing Beaver Creek is awesome. Met so many interesting Aussie people, really. Um, Aussie and Kiwis, there's, I mean, I met a lot of them. It was really interesting. I didn't meet any Chinese. But there were there was a lot of Chinese presence, and I talked to a couple people who said they had some really great conversations with them, uh, representing some of the corporate you know national type companies, and that's neat because I don't think they were really here last year. There was a great Mining Journal article um, I think Jessica did an interview beforehand that talked about all this stuff. So I saw it happening, and Beaver Creek keeps evolving. I just wish I was here during the early years when it was three hundred fifty or four hundred people. I mean they're at like eleven hundred people now, but it's still intimate enough you can have all these awesome casual conversations. But when it comes to, comes to the companies, uh, I wanted, well, so I met a lot of companies for the first time that I'm definitely considering investments or speculations in. Can't go into that here now. I, I got to do some, some of my own research, some intriguing stuff. But I have to mention two that stood out that are well known. Orion 
um, AU on the venture on Finland. Probably the hottest thing at Beaver Creek, in my opinion, because they had these very high grade gold, uh, gold uh, drilling results. And importantly, they didn't have a presentation that you, that you could see online and they didn't have one last year. So I wanna make the point, a lot of the companies that I talked to this year either um, were official companies that didn't have presentations or they were there, there were a couple I met who weren't officially there. And that's actually growing. And some of them I uh, organized in advance and some of them I didn't. And so it's awesome that you, from home you can see the pr presentations live and they're archived and you should do that because uh, the Beaver Creek people do a great job putting them up there. But there's a lot of stuff like Orion. You really only can learn about it by doing the one-on-ones. And I really enjoyed it. Now, I don't own any shares right now. I had made some money, but I'm definitely considering it. This this is right in the middle of, you know, district scale type um, discovery phase. And it's interesting because Orion doesn't show up to a lot of these other conferences. Like this is, they fit in at Beaver Creek. And, um, and like, you know, to find these real stories that are actually way above, or, you know, transitioning from retail to institution, but never really were in that retail phase. I think that's really neat for Orion. I actually feel that um, Mondoro, um, M-U-N on the venture, which if you follow my channel, you it is still my largest position. That one also fits Beaver Creek um, quite well, but Tio, um, the CEO, she shows up at all sorts of conferences, but it's very, very fitting for Beaver Creek and very important for me to point out because I was here last year and it was excellent for me. Uh, that was that was the first time I actually met Tio in person. And she had a lot of time for me, which was great, but not as many meetings. I'm telling you, I think when, I'm pretty sure Monduro had the biggest increase in meetings and maybe, maybe the most amount of meetings of any of the small juniors. That should tell you a lot. And it's so important for me to emphasize this. I have gotten so much pushback for pushing this company and I love it as an example. I mean, I'm hoping I make a lot more money from it, but I'm, it's a great example. You go to places like Beaver Creek and you learn about these things without getting biased by the other people, whether they're online or professionals. And I tell you, so many people who won't give companies like Mandoro a chance because they have these inherent biases. And I mean, it almost ticks me off. It doesn't tick me off now because I don't have to do anything. Everyone wants to talk to Mandoro. I barely have enough time to talk to Tio. Hey, that's great. I don't, I barely even have to do anything now, but if you followed my channel, it was, I felt like the only person talking about this and within 12, you know, well, actually the last six months, there's just been so much change and it, you would know this if you follow Serbia, but I love it. And it's an important to point out companies like Mondoro's and the Orion's because they're hot right now, but they weren't necessarily hot a year or two ago. And you go to a place like Beaver Creek to discover the next ones that are going to get hot. And I have a few absolutely on my list that I'm going to dig deeper into um, based on my research. Uh, this, I think that's a pretty good stopping point. You can see all the different things. I met so many other people, got a bunch of business cards I got to write back to, but I will just end with giving a big shout out to Trevor Hall because I was going to take a shuttle, um, to Beaver Creek from the airport. They're expensive. It's like 80 or 90 bucks. And he, he persistently convinced me to take a train from the airport to Union Station downtown, which is actually surprisingly nice. And we went with this little breakfast joint called Snooze. So good. Had... Ups, uh, pineapple upside down pancakes. So if you ever go to Denver uh, and you want a good breakfast, go to Snooze. That was so much fun. And I really appreciate Tre Trevor driving me over and we had a great chat and he's a good friend. And he was introduced to me by Jessica at Beaver Creek, even though Trevor wasn't even there last year. So another thank you to Jessica for that. And it's great to go to these things, network with people, always making new friends, super high quality people all around. All right. Thanks for listening. This is Nick, the Mining Book Guy. Talk to you soon. Bye.